So with that being said, let's get started with this masking webinar. So I'm gonna head over here into Photo Raw, and I'm just gonna start with this image right here. So let's just head into the edit module. And before we begin actually masking, let's talk about what masking is. So masking in photography is a non-destructive editing technique that allows you to modify and protect specific areas on your image. And because it's non-destructive, it gives you the ability to edit an image entirely. You know, you can add any filter, effect, anything you want onto a photo, and it's not going to modify that base or master file of that photo. So masking, more often than not, is used to apply certain filters or adjustments to certain areas on your photograph. So for this image, for example, we might use masking to add in some detail on a specific area where we we want this to pop up a little bit more with some contrast. And inside On One Photo Raw, this is kind of confusing, but a lot of people think there's a button or an area where you can click that says create a mask or make a mask for me. Well, inside Photo Raw, all of the masks for your layers, your filters, and your local adjustments are already there. They're already made. You just have to go in and modify them. So to access your masking options, let's first talk about our layers here. So. Inside our layers pane here, to give you a better idea to where you access your masking options, let's go into our layers here, and whether it's a layer, a filter, or a local adjustment, there's going to be this little area next to it. And it usually looks like a little masking button, like it does right here, but it looks like I've already clicked into this one, so it's turning it white. But not a big deal, just click on this little area next to your layer, and this is going to show you all of your masking options. So you can see here in here, I have invert, I have reset, I have copy, lumen, and view, and these other controls that I can use to modify my mask. And we're gonna get into all of this later in the webinar, but for now, let's worry about this one button, and this is our view button here. This view button is going to show us our mask view, which is really important for telling us what information that mask is showing onto our photograph. So if we click on this view, it's showing completely white. That means if we view the photo, it's revealing the entire image. In masking, this is a very important principle to learn, but at the very basic, white reveals and black conceals. So in masking, because we have this white mask view and it's completely white, that means it's revealing the entire photograph. Well, now if we inverted this mask, so if I click invert, it's going to invert it to a black mask. If we view this mask, you'll see it's completely black. And you'll notice again that if we go back and we view that, it's not showing any of that photograph. Well, that's because we've changed that mask view to black. And again, white reveals and black conceals. So we can invert this back, and it's back to white, and now we can actually see the entire photograph. So now let's go in, and let me show you how it is applied within different filters. It may be a little bit easier to see that happening. So let's go into our effects tab here, and I'm just going to add a filter. I'll just add a split tone filter here, and I'll use one of my favorite presets, this best. So inside my split tone filter here, if I access my masking options by clicking on this little icon here, this will show me those same masking options I had up in that layers pane. And I can use it to modify the mask for this filter. Also, like I was saying earlier, this little icon right here with the rectangle and the circle in it is going to show you your masking options for your filters, your layers, and your local adjustments. So anywhere you see this icon, you can click on it and you can access those masking options. Okay, so if I view this, you can see that it's entirely white. So again, it's revealing that entire filter. Well, let's say we want to just strictly apply this filter to maybe just the sky area here. Kind of tone down the sky area, and then we can always go in and modify this foreground. So there's a few different ways that we can actually selectively apply a mask. And at the, the most basic, we're probably going to apply a mask using a masking brush. And that's probably the most common way to actually selectively apply a mask. And if you want to selectively apply a mask, you could either paint in a filter or an adjustment, or you could paint a filter or an adjustment out. So let's do it the first way and let's actually paint it in. So to paint in a filter or a local adjustment, let's say you want to selectively apply something to a specific area on your photograph real quick, what I would do is inside my masking options for the split tone filter, 
I'm going to go up and I'm going to click invert. So now that my mask view is black. So if I view my mask, it's completely black, meaning it's concealing the entire filter and it's not applying anything to my shot. So with that mask view at black, to selectively apply a filter, we're going to be using our masking brush. And like I was saying earlier, this is probably the most common way to selectively apply a filter. So if you don't have your masking brush selected already, you can grab it by hitting B on your keyboard. So B for brush, and it'll grab your masking brush. So when we've added a filter and we're trying to selectively apply it, once we have our masking brush selected up here in our top tool modifier bar, we're going to have different options that we can use to modify this brush. And the most important is probably your mode. Now this mode is going to determine whether you're painting in or you're painting out. So because I've turned my mask view to black and I've concealed the entire filter, I'm probably going to have to paint that in, if that makes sense. So because my mask view is black, nothing is being revealed. So I would have to paint it in to reveal something onto my photo. So let's go up and let's select paint in. You can also change your mask paint mode by holding down shift and hitting X on your keyboard. So shift and X, and that will change your paint mode. Next, we have size up here, which is going to determine the brush size, which you can also change by the bracket keys on your keyboard. And then we have two very important modifiers, our feathering and our opacity. So first, let's go in and let's modify this with 100% feathering and 100% opacity, which just means that my feathering is going to meet, bring my brush edge to a complete and nice natural feather. Whereas if it was at zero, the brush edge would be completely hard. Also, my opacity is going to determine how much or how little of that filter that I brush onto. So let's leave it at 100 so we paint in 100% of that filter. So I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to brush this split tone filter on my sky. <coughs> just like that. So. You can probably notice here, but now in my mask view, that top area of my photo is white. So let's go back and let's view this mask. And you can see where I painted this filter onto. I used this masking brush with 100% opacity to paint this filter onto the top of this photo. And you can see that white reveals by revealing this top part. And so if I view this and I turn this off and on, it's strictly applied to that top part of my photo. Well, let's reset this real quick and we'll invert it again. And let's say we only want to paint on about 50% of this filter. And let's say we want it to have a harder brush edge. Well, let's go up to our masking brush here and let's lower our feathering to about 50. And let's lower our opacity to 50 as well. So now if I brush this on, Oops. So now if I view this mask, you can see that it's completely gray where I want it to be applied to. Well, that's because my opacity is not at 100%. If your opacity is not at 100% or zero, you're going to be having shades of gray in there. And those shades of gray are the different opacities to which you're applying that filter. So if you want less of that filter applied, it's going to be a darker gray. Whereas if you want more of that filter applied, if I brush this on here, you can see that it gets to be brighter because white reveals and black conceals. And then if I just keep brushing it on here, I can make it completely white. So let's just reset this again. Let me view this. And now let me show you the other way that you can actually selectively apply. So the first way is to invert that mask and then paint in your filter or adjustment. Well, let's do it the opposite way and let's remove and protect an area on our photograph. So I've changed my split tone filter back to completely white so that it's revealing that entire split tone filter onto my photo. Well, let's say I want to remove it from this foreground area. Well, to do that, I'm going to use my masking brush and I'm going to go up and I'm actually going to go back and increase my feathering to 100 and my opacity to 100. But this time, because my mask view is white, 
I can't paint in anything because it's already painted in. So this time I have to paint it out. So with my masking brush selected, I can either go up to my mode and I can choose paint out, or I can just hold down shift and hit X on my keyboard. And now we're set to paint out. So now I'm just gonna go in here and I'll just brush this off the bottom part of my photo. So now if I view that mask again, it's similar to the mask we had earlier when I brushed that area onto the top of my photograph. So if I turn this off and on now, it's strictly applied to the top part of my photograph and not applied to the bottom. Okay, so now let's go in here and let's play with the foreground a little bit. So we'll add a filter here, we'll add a curves filter, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a mid-tone boost, probably about right there. And then I'll add in some contrast. Oops. Like that. But I don't like how that looks on the top of my photograph. I only want it applied to this bottom area. Well, because I've added this filter, and I know that when I add a filter or a, local or a layer, the mask view is automatically set to white, so it's already revealing that um, filter onto my photograph. So what I can do is I can just leave my brush set to paint out and I can just brush it off the top part where I have that split tone filter. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, we've dimmed down that sky area and we've brought life into the foreground. And we've done that just by using different masks. So those are a few of the quickest ways to probably selectively apply a filter by using your masking brush. Let's go in here and let's actually modify a local adjustment, which is the same exact thing as modifying a mask for a filter or a layer. You just use a different tool. So let's go into our local adjustments here. And when I go into my local adjustments tab, it's automatically going to give me a new local adjustment layer. So you'll see in here, I have a new local adjustment layer well, the difference between a local adjustment layer and a filter or an actual layer is with your local adjustments, the mask view, you'll notice that it's automatically set to black. Whereas if I go into my effects and I add a filter, the mask view is automatically set to white. So whenever you add a filter, it's automatically going to reveal that filter. But if you add a local adjustment, you're going to have to paint it in before you actually see anything applied. So inside my local adjustments tab here, I'm gonna use this preset style detail so that I can add a little bit of detail, but I only want the detail applied to my foreground area. Well, this is where local adjustments come in handy is that you actually don't have to go in and invert the mask and then paint it out. You're already set to paint in, and so now you can just use your adjustment brush and you can paint this in on the bottom area of your photograph. Now, a lot of people seem to get confused on your local adjustment brush and your masking brush. So I was using a masking brush earlier when I was painting out my filters. Well, masking brushes only work for layer masks and filter masks, whereas your adjustment brush is only used for local adjustments. So to demonstrate that, I'll just real quick. So if I click on this layer real here, right here, and I click my masking options, you'll see that I'm, it grabbed my masking brush already because it's, I'm telling Photo Raw that I want to modify a layer mask. So to modify our layer mask, we're going to be using our masking tools, which has our masking brush, our masking bug, and our AI quick mask tool. Now if I go in and I click my local adjustment right here, and I click the masking options, it's automatically pulled up that local adjustment brush for me. So now I'm in my local tools, which is where I'm going to be modifying my local adjustments. So, local adjustment brush, same thing as your masking brush. You're going to have these same modifiers up here. It's just for your local adjustment masks. So, I know that I need to be set to paint in. My brush size is pretty good, and I'm gonna leave my feathering and my opacity at 100. So now I'm just gonna brush this local adjustment on of detail onto the bottom part of this photograph. 
So now if I go over to my local adjustment layer and I view that mask, you can see that it's applied to that bottom part of my photograph because that's where I brushed it onto. And if I turn this off and on, does a good job of just applying detail to that bottom area on my image. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard now, we've done a good job of toning down that sky, bringing in detail, and also a little bit of a boost to that bottom area, strictly by just using our masking brush and our adjustment brush. Okay, so those are some of the quickest ways to selectively apply, especially by using brushes. So let's move on and let's do it with some gradients. Okay, so now that we've learned about brushing with masks, which is an awesome technique and it's probably the most common way to selectively apply, let's talk about using gradients in masking, which is another awesome tool that you can use to selectively apply. And it really gives you the ability to kind of blend a lot more naturally than you could with brushes. So to start off with this photograph or with any photograph using um, gradients, I typically like to use gradients whenever I have large areas on my photograph that I want to fix. So for example, I can see in this photograph that I really want to go in and just kind of remove some of these blown out areas on Janelle's face here. Well, an easy way to do that is to use gradient masks. So let's start out and let's use a local adjustment layer first. And so with this new local adjustment layer here, I'm going to click on darken so that's automatically set to darken. And again, if you look in my masking options here, you can see that my mask view is black. That's because when you add a local adjustment layer, it's automatically set to black and you actually have to paint in that adjustment for it to take effect. Or you could click invert, either way. But I have my local adjustment layer set to darken and it's grabbed me my adjustment brush already, but in my local and in your mask tools also, up in this top tool modifier bar here, there's going to be this icon right here. And that's going to be your masking bug or your adjustment bug. And they do the exact same thing one is for local adjustments, and one is for layers and filter mask. <coughs> Excuse me. So with this gradient, I can use this gradient to blend my masking a little bit better by using different shapes. So in my adjustable gradient tool options here, I can choose a preset. So if I go into my preset, if you kind of look at the thumbnail view of the preset, you can see that there's an area of white, and then that there's an area of black. And so if you think about masking in the sense that white reveals and black conceals, you can see where these presets are going to be applying this adjustment. Well, because I only want this adjustment applied to this kind of top area of my photograph, I'm going to use a preset linear bottom because if I look in here, that bottom black part is what's going to be protected and this bottom or this top white part is what's going to be adjusted by that filter adjustment. So let's click linear bottom here. And for my shape, I'm just going to choose gradient. And my opacity is at 100. And now I'm just going to drop this down. And you can see that it's only applied this to the top part of this photograph. So now if I go over to my adjustment here and I view my mask, you can see that this gradient is blending naturally right here. And so if I view this photograph, it's doing a great job of just taking the highlighted areas on this top part and leaving this area nice and exposed. And the great thing about these gradients is you can adjust the feathering and you can flip them really easily. So for this photograph, I'd probably pull down on the feathering to blend it even more. And then I can go over and let's actually rotate it just a little bit more, maybe right there. That looks pretty good. And then I can go over and I'm just going to remove a little bit of saturation. There we go. Just like that. So now if I turn this adjustment off and on, and I view it, you can see that that, it, that gradient is strictly applying you know, the majority of this to where it's white, and then the black area is where it's being protected. So just an awesome quick way to really blend a mask really quickly. <coughs> so now that we understand a little bit about the gradients, let's go in and there's a few different ways you can actually modify a gradient. 
So let's go in and in my effects tab here, I'm just gonna fix her skin tone a little bit by using a curves filter. So I'm gonna go in here, probably gonna pull down on the highlights a little bit like that. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to move these highlights a little bit. That's probably good right there. And then maybe bring back her shadows. Sweet, so I think that looks really great just on her face, but it's dimming down the rest of the photograph. So if we only want this applied to strictly her face right here, we can use a masking gradient to do that. So because I'm in my effects tab here, I'm going to be using my masking brush. Well, a quick way to grab your masking gradient is just to hit M on your keyboard. So if I hit M on my keyboard, that's going to grab me my masking gradient right away. And you'll notice it's basically the same. We know we have our preset, we have our shape and our opacity. So rather than using a gradient, I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna use a different shape and I'm gonna choose edges. And the reason I'm choosing edges is because I only want this curves filter applied to a specific area within this shape. So with edges, I can drop this down and watch as I pull this in here and I twist it, <coughs> oops. Pull this over her face. And then I can feather it. And now watch as I turn this off and on. It's only applying that kind of highlight tonality fix strictly to that area in here where I drop down that gradient. So now if I go into my curves filter here and I go into the masking options, <coughs> I can view this mask and you can see that with that gradient, it's really applying a strong amount in the middle, but then I've feathered it quite a bit so that it's blended naturally with the rest of the photograph. So we view this again, <coughs> and we hit the backslash key on our keyboard. You know, just by using a local adjustment and a curve, and we've used some different masking options, we've really kind of brought out the, you know, the best of this photograph and kind of healed those, those bright areas. So let me show you a couple more examples of how you can use local adjustments and filters with your masking gradients and your adjustable gradients. So let's go into this photograph here. And so if we crop this photograph, yeah, let's use a square. So you'll notice at the top of this photograph, we have a lot more light coming in than we do at the bottom. So a great way to selectively apply an adjustment to just the bottom area is by using your adjustable gradient. So let's go into our local adjustments here. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm actually gonna go down to reveal shadows and I'm gonna pull down the shadows a little bit and I'm gonna pull up on the exposure just a hair. So now I want this only applied to this bottom area. So I'm gonna grab my adjustable gradient by holding down shift and hitting K on my keyboard. So now I have my adjustable gradient selected and I have my preset at linear top, which is exactly what I want because I have over here on this left hand side, you can see that the bottom part of this thumbnail is white, so that it's revealing that adjustment onto the bottom part. And then the top part is black, meaning it's protected up there. So <clears throat> let's drop this down. We'll feather it quite a bit here. And then I'll just rotate it a little bit more so there's not such a harsh line on her, sh on her forehead right there. And then I'll actually just cool this down a hair. Maybe add in a little bit of a mid-tone boost. And so now if I turn this off and on here, just by using that one local adjustment layer, we basically set the tonality for this entire photo. And if I go in here and I view this mask, you can see that the, that local adjustment gradient is really doing an awesome job of just blending that exposure and that shadow tone really nicely with the top area of this photograph.
Let's do one more here. Actually, let's do a couple more. Just because these are an awesome, awesome tool, and they can really help your photographs um, just kind of come to life without too much editing. Okay, so for this particular photo, I think <clears throat> what I want to do is just kind of remove, not remove, but tone down this area on the right and this area on the left. And there's a really cool um, gradient shape that we can use, which will allow us to actually target this middle area and protect it. So let's go in here and I'm going to choose darken again. And I'm going to hold down shift and hit K on my keyboard. And up here, if we have kind of a middle area that we want to protect, but we want to tone down the areas around it, is we can go up to our shape, and I can choose Reflected Gradient. So watch as I drop this down here. I can twist this. And if I go over to my masking options here, this area in the middle is black, which, meaning, which means it's being protected from that adjustment, while the other areas on the left and then the right are white meaning that adjustment is being revealed onto them. So if I turn this off and on here, it's dimming down that area on the left and the right. Well, similar to the masking bug and the adjustable gradient is you can use these perforated lines here to feather that adjustment. So now if I turn this off and on, So can you, Bob asks, can you use two gradients, one to lighten the bottom and another to darken the top? He also asks, can two gradients overlap? And yes to both. So let's actually do the first one. So yeah, actually let's do it. We'll go local adjustment layer for the bottom part here. Actually, let's grab a different photograph for that. Let's do this one. This will be a good one for that. Okay, so whenever we want to kind of bring out the foreground in the photograph and dim down the background, it's really easy to do if you use two different gradients, like Bob was asking. So for this particular photo, I think the first thing I want to do is bring out the tonality in this ice cream. So to do that, I'm going to go into my effects tab here, filter, and I'm actually going to add a curves filter. I just love the curves filter, and I'm just going to bring out my midtones, and then I'll add in a little bit of contrast. Boom, I think that looks good for this kind of front area and then we can tone down the background. So now with my curves filter, I only want this applied to this bottom area. So let's hit M on my keyboard. That's gonna grab me my masking bug. And so now I'll go up and I want it applied to the bottom. So I'm gonna choose linear top because I see that that bottom area is white. And then I'll just drop this down here and then I can feather it. about there. <clears throat> so let's do about right there. Okay. And now I'm going to click add and that's going to give me another one. So now I have two of them on there. And now watch as I flip this one. So now that I've added those two, <clears throat> you can see that on the left hand, I have this adjustable gradient I can grab. I have this other one I can grab. And they're actually still applying the same filter. So if I go into my masking options and I view that mask, you can see that because I angled them, both because it was, you know, it's kind of leading, the, the subject is leading out this way, I angled them so that top right corner and that top left corner are kind of toned down and they're diluted a little bit so they're not so heavy on the frame. So if I view this, it's strictly applying this curve filter to this bottom area on my photograph, kind of just like right where the table's at. So now let's go in here <clears throat> and let's do the same thing. And this might be a good time to actually show you guys copying and pasting masks. So let's do that. So this is an awesome, awesome way, and it will save you a ton of time whenever you're masking, and that's the ability to copy and paste masks. I can't tell you countless minutes I've saved just by copying and pasting masks. So once you've created a mask, you know, I took a couple 
minutes to create this mask. Once you've created a mask, cherish it and save it, and then you can always just keep using it while you're editing the photograph. So now that we have this mask here, we can use this mask to really dial in this photograph. So I'm gonna copy this mask. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna add a local adjustment layer. And because local adjustment layers aren't automatically applied because their mask view is black, we can go in here, we'll just paste this mask, invert it, and then we can kind of play with the, you know, the opacity a little bit. But you can see that if I view this, <coughs> It's the opposite of that mask that we copied earlier. So if I invert this back, now we have that same exact mask that we copied from that curves filter. So if I view this again and I turn this off and on, that adjustment is strictly applied to that top kind of triangle area around our ice cream here. well on your way to just masking anything and everything, let's talk about a more advanced masking option. And it's really not that much more advanced than um, some of the basic masking techniques, but because it, it has two words in the name, it's a lot more advanced. Color range masking. So inside of On One Photo Raw, if we want to apply a mask to a specific color, we can do that really easily. So let's go in here and I'll do the same thing I did earlier. Let's just use a curves filter and I'll pull up on it <clears throat> okay, so to demonstrate the color range mask here, let's say I only want this curves filter applied to the yellows in my image. Well, I can do that by going into my masking options for this curves filter, and to enable a color range mask, just go down, and in your masking options, just click on this color range option. That will enable your color range mask, and now you're on your way to modifying a color range mask. It is that easy. And so what I would recommend, once you click that color range, I would either use your color picker right here, and you can pick a color, or use your color dropper right here, and drop it on the color that you want to create as your mask. I'm gonna use yellow in this case. So now if I go in, or gold, or whatever that color is, so now if I go in and I view this photo, or the mask view for this photo, you can see that it's sampling that color, and it's creating a mask for me based off of the tones of that single color. So if I only wanted to apply to, you know, the, the more, ye I guess that's more of a gold, but the more goldy of gold colors, I can pull back on this color range and you can see it removes those other tonalities of gold and just kind of pinpoints that one that I chose. And you can play with this, you know, by going up and down. Let's see how it is like about right there. I bet if we view this, yeah, so now if we turn this off and on here, you can see even in this rope here, it really does a good job of just boosting up those yellows. And so let's say we wanted to add in, maybe let's do it to the reds. So if I just do a tone curve boost to the reds, color range, let's just click red. So now if I view this photo, you can see that that's just pulling out all of those reds and I can grab less, or I can grab more. So now if I turn this off and on here, doing the same thing it was doing earlier with those yellows and just boosting those colors strictly to those tonalities that we chose with the color picker. And I would recommend using the color range mask for things like flowers or, you know, t-shirts, it's awesome. So if you have a if you have a, a portrait and someone's wearing a t-shirt that you want to have detail but you don't want their skin to have detail, you could use a color range mask, drop that color on um, their t-shirt, and then you could just strictly apply detail. Let's just do it right here. I could probably just show you guys a lot easier than I could tell you, couldn't I? Okay. And I'm a visual learner too. I don't know why I talk so much. It'd probably be easier just to show everything. Okay. So let's add dynamic contrast, let's make it surreal. Okay, and so let's say, obviously, we don't want this applied to a skin because it's just crunching it up. We only want it applied to this nice little pink t-shirt here. So, if we go into our dynamic contrast filter, we can click color range, that'll turn on our color range mask. Now I'll use my dropper tool, and I'll drop this on an area of pink on a photograph, or on a shirt. 
So now I can pull back on the color range. Right there. So now if I view this and I zoom in here to a shirt and I turn this off and on here, you can see that it applies a ton of detail, brings out a lot of that red, and it's only applied to that area that we chose and it's not applied to a skin tone or anything else. So the color range mask, awesome tool for you know fixing things like that where you just have specific tones and colors in your photograph that you want to target. So if I turn this color or this curves filter off and on, you can see that it's applied to those reds in here. So if I view this mask here, um, we'll actually pull it up quite a bit more. So what if I, you know, I want this applied to a lot of those reds in here and these. So let's say, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of mumbling here. So let's say I only want this curves filter applied to this kite, this kite, this kite, and this kite, and none of the other kites. Well, even if my color range mask is um, enabled here, so I can set my masking brush to paint out, I can brush this out while keeping that color range mask. So even though I have that color range mask enabled, I can still paint out the areas that I don't want that color range mask to be applied to. So now if I view this photo and I turn this off and on, it's just applied to this area where those kites were and nowhere else on the photograph. So yeah, so an easy way is just to maybe go into your masking options. You can view that color range mask and then you can just paint it off of those areas you don't want it. Or you could view your photo and you could do the same thing. All right, so now that we've gone over a little bit of the color range mask here, let's actually move on and let's go on to one of everyone's favorite masking option and that is the luminosity mask which no wonder, it's a super cool feature and it really helps you um, modify tonalities in your shot. Okay. So, with this particular photo, just real quick, um, let me just pull up on the develop tab a little bit just to bring in a little bit more life to the shot. that pretty good? Just for a base exposure? I think that's okay. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, so the main thing we need to focus on here is the, the luminosity mask, anyway. So, we'll add a filter here and let's add a glow filter. And if you've watched any of my webinars, you know that I go into glow and I always choose charge more subtle. But there's a reason, and if you look at what it does to the water, it just does magnificent things to water. So I love, love, love the glow filter and I love this charge more subtle. But if we look in here, we're seeing that it's not being, or it's, it's being applied everywhere on the photograph and we only want it applied to the water. We don't want this kind of glow, this dark glow around these, um, this foliage and stuff and these rocks. We want that nice and detailed. So inside our glow filter here, to create a luminosity mask, it's a lot easier than you think. Just go down and click Lumen. So even by just clicking Lumen, if I turn this off and on now, you can see that the majority of that filter is strictly being applied to the water, which is exactly what we want. But if we go in here and we view this mask, you can see that there's areas that we could clean up. So while we're looking at our mask view, let's go over the luminosity mask. So the, lumi the luminosity mask makes a mask for you based off of the bright and the dark areas in your photograph. So whenever you click Lumen, that's telling PhotoRaw, hey, take the bright areas on my photograph, turn those white, and take the dark areas and conceal the filter or adjustment from those areas. So you can see that in this area on our mask that the water, because it was brighter than the rocks, has a lot of that white being applied to it, which means this glow filter is going to be more inclined to be applied to these areas, if that makes sense. So to modify our luminosity mask, that's where things get a little bit tricky, but they're still pretty easy. So in our filter, to modify a luminosity mask, 
we're going to be using three different sliders. Feather, levels, and window. And most importantly, levels. This is going to be where you're going to you know, really hone in where you want this mask applied to. And it's a lot easier than you think. So, in this luminosity mask, because we're applying this luminosity to the brighter areas, well, we want to kind of target those whites. So in this levels slider right here, to get a better understanding, let's take a look at what each of these buttons does. So this far left button, this far left right here, is your shadows. So this is your dark or shadow tones in your mask. This middle area is going to be your mid-tones. So that's going to be the mid-tones within this mask right here. And then we have our highlights. So with this level slider here, it depends on if you're in your inverted view or not. But if you're just going through and you've added the luminosity mask, this is the kind of the, the prime way to do it. But so with these, this level slider here, if I want to remove shadow tones, I grab my shadows and I pull them to the right. See how that removes shadow tones from my photograph or from this mask? So by grabbing those shadow tones and pulling them to the right, I'm removing them from my mask. But if I leave them there, I can add in more midtones by pulling left. But if I want to remove midtones, again, I pull to the right. So if I pull to the right here, you can see I'm removing those midtones from my from my mask. Now if I pull to the left here, you can see that it's incorporating more of those midtones. So the way I kind of like to think about it, and this can change whether you're, you know, you're inverted and you're you're looking for the darks or the whites, but if you just chose lumen and you're just kind of looking for the highlighted or the bright midtones, the best way to think about it is with this level slider is the right removes and the left adds. So if I want to remove shadows, I can grab on my shadows and I'll remove it from by pulling to the right. And then if I want to add some in, move it to the left. So right removes. So if I want to remove midtones, I can remove midtones by pulling onto the right. If I want to add them in, I pull them to the left. And it'll get a lot more simple the more you play with it. And it, it really kind of depends on the photograph you're working on. This can be, you know, this level setter can be a lot different depending on the shot. This is kind of an easy one to look at. But um, yeah, just a lot of playing with those level sliders to kind of just hone in the, the look that you want for your luminosity mask. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to pull up on these shadow tones. So that's going to remove some of those shadow tones from this mask because I only want this glow filter applied to the water. So obviously I'm going to remove these shadows. But by removing shadows, I'm removing some of those midtones because obviously I'm kind of creeping up on this midtone area. So I can pull back on those midtones to the left and that will add them in like that. And then same thing with your highlights. So if I want to bring in more highlights, I can pull this in and you can see that brings in a lot more highlights and it makes it a lot more white in here. And if I want to remove highlights, again, right removes, so I can just pull to the right, and that will remove highlights from my luminosity mask. So let's actually leave it about right there. That looks pretty good as far as the glow filter goes. So if I view this mask now, and I turn this off and on here, you can see it's applying that glow filter strictly to those areas on the water that I wanted it applied to. And a cool thing about the luminosity mask is you can also brush in areas that you don't want or you want. So down here with my water, I actually want a little bit more of that um, glow filter on this blue water. So I'm going to grab my masking brush. I'm going to hold down shift and hit X. And now I can just brush this glow onto the other areas that it didn't get on the luminosity mask. So now if I view this, oops, I guess I could probably just paint this in right there without looking at it. So now if I turn this off and on here, again, just does an awesome job of just kind of smoothing out, silkening out that water right there. So what I usually do if I'm modifying a, a waterfall or something like this is I'll copy and paste these masks like I was saying earlier. So with this mask, I'm definitely going to copy this. I'm going to add a filter, and let's just add a color enhancer. 
I'll go into those masking options, I'll paste that mask, and then let's just warm this up. So you see that by warming that up, I'm removing a lot of that blue color. And I can actually remove some of that saturation. So now if I turn this off and on, it's done an awesome job of getting a lot of that blue color cast off of that water. And that's because if we view this mask here, we're using that same mask that we used earlier for the glow filter. And another thing I like to do is what we kind of did earlier where we um, pasted that mask and then we inverted. And that's a really easy way to do it if you're um, shooting waterfalls. So now that we've kind of um, honed in our luminosity mask to just cater to these water areas, let's add a filter. Let's add dynamic contrast. Let's use one of my faves. And let's paste that mask again, and then let's invert it. So now if I turn this off and on here, it's strictly being applied to the areas around the water, and it's not applying any detail to the watered areas. All right. So let's move on here, and I just want to show you guys one more kind of luminosity mask tool. And that's because I showed you the way to modify it if you're looking for the brighter areas. So let's do it to modify if we're looking for the darker tones in the shot. So let's just crop this photograph real quick. Um, and you guys ever been to Astoria? Awesome, awesome little coastal town. And the beach isn't bad either. Or the bridge, sorry, the beach. They have a couple beaches there. Okay. So, so earlier we we're looking at the water in that waterfall, but now let's go in and let's actually pull out some of the luminosity and the tones in our shadow by using a luminosity mask. So let's go into local. And I'm gonna click reveal shadows. And I'm going to pull up on my midtones a little bit, add in a little bit of contrast, structure, and then exposure just a hair, half a stop. So now let's go in, I'm going to click luminosity, and then I'm going to invert this. So now if I go in and I view this mask here, because I chose that luminosity mask, it went like this at first, obviously the bright areas on this photograph got the mask first, but because I went over and I inverted this, now I'm telling PhotoRAW, take all the dark areas on this photograph and then put the white on them so it reveals this adjustment. So now I can hone in my, um, my luminosity mask, but now I'm actually doing it so that I target the darker areas. So same kind of principle applies, but it's a little bit different now. So now if I go in and I, mo I move this to the right, it's going to add in shadow tones because that's what I'm looking for. I'm applying this luminosity mask and I've inverted so that it's looking for the shadowy tones and not the bright tones. And if I want to um, remove midtones, I would pull them to the right now, or I mean the left. I would pull them to the left, whereas before it was right, um, right removes, but now it's left removes because we're searching for an opposite luminous. So I'll just pull this over here. Probably about right there. Okay, so now's a good time to talk about this other slider down here, and that's our window slider. And this window slider, I like to think of it as just the kind of tool that if you're looking at your mask and you want to remove some shadows or highlights really easily, this is the tool that you go to. So if I look in here, let's say I want to remove some of these shadow tones. If I want to remove some of these shadow tones here, or sorry, if I want to remove some of these highlight tones here, I can go over to this right side of my mask, and if I pull them into the left, oh, you're right, okay, I'm, that's my bad, guys. Because we're searching for the darker tones, this, Windows mat, this window filter isn't probably going to do too much for us, because, so if we inverted this, so now we're looking for the brighter areas. If we wanted to remove some of these shadow tones really quickly, in my window slider here, I could pull to the right and watch as that removes shadow tones. 
it just removes them instantly from the mask. And then if I want to remove highlights, I can pull to the left and you can see that instantly removes highlights. But because we're inverted and we're looking for the dark, that window slider probably isn't going to help us too much. But there is another slider that I want to show you guys, and that's this feathering slider here. So if I go back and I view this mask here and I turn this off and on, I can see in this area and over here it's a little bit crunchy. So a good way to kind of feather out or tone down your mask is just to go into this feathering slider here. And if I view my mask, watch as I pull over on my feathering. It just kind of blurs it up so that when I view this, and I turn this off and on now, it's just a little bit more realistic on the edges and it's not so sharp around those mask edges. Oops. All right, so I think that's it as far as um, you know, understanding masking goes and then some more advanced techniques. Let me look back here and see if there's any questions real quick. So Mario asks, is it possible to protect some picked colors during color range? So you could do that, but the way you, could, you would probably go about that is by um, inverting that mask. So if you wanted to protect a color, let's say in here, um, move up on the saturation, just pull up onto the ton. So let's say in here we really like this orange uh, color in this photograph, but we want it to protect the blues. Well, I could go into my color enhancer and I could just choose color range. <sighs> Enable it. Choose color range, I'll choose blue. And then I'll invert this. just grab this blue. Okay, so now that I've grabbed that blue there, we'll go back so you guys can see. So I've grabbed this blue from this mountain area over here, right? Well now I'm gonna go over and I'm actually gonna go up and I'm gonna invert this mask so that I have it protected. So I have that blue protected in here. So now I can play with my color range to modify how little or how much of that blue I've protected. And then I can go in and if I view this mask here and I turn this off and on, it's protected those blue areas and these rocks and then this mountain and then this building right here. And it's only brought the saturation up for that kind of, I guess every other color but blue. So I hope that that helps Mario. That's probably the, the quickest way I would think to um, protecting a color. Bob asks, what are the difference between effects versus filters? So. Effects is just the tab that you apply filters into. Um, the one difference, I guess, is that you could use your effects tab completely. So um, we'll just go and I'll add in some different filters here. So in your effects tab, a lot of people don't really know this, but you can go in and you can modify each filter individually. So I can modify the masks for each of these filters. I can go in here and you know play with the, the names, whatever I want to do. But also, right underneath your effects tab, you can actually modify the entire effects tab with all of those filters. So if I wanna just mask out all of my filters from just the top area, I could do that by using my masking options for just my effects tab. So you can see in here that I've brushed that off the top and so that bottom part is um, white, meaning it's revealing all of, this, all of these different filters onto my photograph. You can also use masking options for your effects tab and you can reset the entire thing. So I, I don't think there's a, a difference, I guess just one lives inside the other would be the best way to put it. And Dan asks, what about the Perfect Brush and AI? So those are a little bit more advanced and they take a little bit more time to explain. So I think the next masking webinar will get into those more. Um, there are some videos online on how to use the Perfect Brush and also how to use the AI Quick Mask tool. Um, there's also a brand new course that just came out that I actually made um, called Mastering the Mask, 
And if you're an On One Plus member, you got that. But um, if you're not, I think it came with the first four lessons. And those should have um, a couple lessons on the Perfect Brush and AI Quick Mask tool as well. All right, guys. Well, I really appreciate everyone joining me. Thank you so much. Thanks for the great questions, too. Um, I hope everyone learned a little bit more about masking and how to use it. And yeah, next time um, we'll get in a little bit more about the different um, masking techniques, such as the Perfect Brush and the AI Quick Mask tool. But it, thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Have a great weekend and uh, stay tuned for more.